So we're gonna go ahead and lube the chain and tune up the derailleur because when you're riding an off-road type of bike like this, you know, they get dirty. So this is Michael from Ohm. How's it going, man? Hey, how are you? Doing really well. Why don't you just jump right into it? Okay, sure. You can just use any type of chain lube and basically start from the rear and just turn the chain while you're applying the oil. Just kind of letting it drip on there. Yeah. So I would suggest if you're riding in dry conditions, you only need to lube the chain maybe once every one, to one or two weeks. If you're riding in wet conditions, you can definitely lube the chain uh, more often, such as even after every ride. What does it do? Like why lube the chain at all? Well, it's going to keep the chain in much better condition and um, it's going to prolong the life of it and prevent corrosion. It seems like it would, you know, when you say corrosion, so some chains, can they rust or are they all like stainless steel? Some chains can definitely rust. Our chains are using a non-rusting material, so they're all stainless. Okay, cool. So it allows those links to sort of pivot more freely and that probably makes it a little bit easier to shift gears and stuff too. And that was the second part of this. So we we're going to talk about the derailleur back here. And, and if you hear your your bike, it's like ting, 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 you know, scraping noise. Mm. What can you do to sort of tune that up real quick? Yeah. So depending on the system on your bike, you've got a couple of adjustments for your derailleur. So if you start pedaling and you notice some clicking sound, the chain is just not indexing properly on the different cogs. You can first of all use your quick adjustments which are connected to the gear shifter. Cool. And so by turning it clockwise or counterclockwise you can adjust the tension on the the cable. Okay. A second adjustment you can use. There's another quick adjustment um, on the edge of the derailleur. Okay. You can also turn this clockwise or counterclockwise. So while you're turning the crank you can twist these adjustments mm -hmm. until you uh, remove the clicking sound. Okay. And that's sort of a quick adjustment. If you're wanting to do more fine tuning, you can use the low and high adjustment on the derailleur. Okay. So the low would be for low gears and the high would be for high gears. And you can actually look at the cog in the back and make sure that it's lining up with the middle of the chain on that specific gear. Cool, wow. So and you're saying low gear, so is that like these larger ones? Yeah, exactly. So this would be your lowest, and then this would be your highest gear. Okay, so if I'm at the low and that's where the clicking is, I, I kind of adjust the, the L screw and... Yep, exactly. exactly. And mm -hmm. uh, you don't wanna turn it too much, just turn it uh, a quarter turn per time. Okay, that's awesome. And do you, you know, this is a higher end drivetrain, SRAM via GT. It's like one of the higher end for the urban model. If you have like a, a lower end derailleur, like a Shimano Tourney TX, it might not mm -hmm. have all those adjustments. And wh what's the difference? Why pay more for a nicer derailleur? What do you get? I find the higher end you go, you get crisper shifting, and just more durability, and how fast the, the derailleur works and how much it can shift under load. So Got it. if you're going uphill or downhill, you'll be able to get the same shifting performance. Okay, well, the other thing to talk about was as you've, you know, we put on some lubrication, we might want to actually shift through those different gears so that each of the chain rings back there get, mm -hmm. uh, get a little bit of, of lube on them. And then we've got a rag here. I think it's good when you've, when you've kind of cycled through to Use the towel to kind of get off a little bit of the extra lube because the idea is you don't want it like dripping wet, right? It's just to sort of mostly get it into those links and then kind of brush it off at the end. Does that sound about right? Yeah, definitely. You don't want uh, too much lube on that's flying around. It's also going to create some gunk in your chain. I would say the key is regular application. Yeah, regular. And also, by the way, I love the Park Tool stand. That's made this really easy to, to do and to shoot today. But if you don't have one of these, you can always flip the bike upside down where it's on the seat and handlebars, and then you can, you can have free access to the drivetrain. So thank you again, Michael. It's awesome to get a firsthand look at something like this, especially on an electric bike. And of course, to make your bike lighter or whenever you're doing stuff, you can take the battery off uh, to make it a little bit easier. So cheers. Good stuff.